Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Christ Lutheran Church. Glad to have you all here this morning. What a great day to be here, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Amen. I, good, good. Got a little Baptist going over there. I like that. <laughs> we're starting a little late, though. People were trickling in a couple of uh, things. Uh, for those of you who would like the newsletter, it is done for the month. If you get hard copy, it is on the white table. Thank you for picking them up try to remind you on the way out if you haven't turned in your estimated giving form I'm going to go pretty fast this morning that's out there some of you are just returning from up north that helps us build the budget which the budget meeting is in November the devotionals for this quarter are out there if you need those as well so thank you for picking all that up you can remember all that right the pictorial uh, sign up is out there as well I know some of you are returning again from being up north we need to have 100 people signed up. Carolyn's going to give us a real brief update here in a minute. So the table's out there in the narthex. Remember, if you're just a regular visitor, we'd like in the pictorial. Uh, if your spouse doesn't worship with us, we'd be glad to have them be in the pictorial. We won't X them out or do anything like that. So, Disaster response. I know you all know what happened in southwest Florida. There is a one-page insert that we'll be running for a while. This is for Salvation Army. Of course, there are a lot of good agencies that you uh, can give to. Uh, just make sure that they do what Salvation Army does. It's right in here. 100% of what you give to Hurricane uh, Fiona or uh, Hurricane Ian relief goes to their canteen operation and their operation for those who are displaced. They don't take any overhead out. You can do it right on their website or send it, so thank you. Uh, be safe, please tell people, I was talking to somebody about this this morning, I really get tired of weather forecasts. The Weather Channel was bragging how correct they were. They missed it by hundreds of miles, <laughs> and people died. There are people in Fort Lauderdale who said, we didn't leave because they said the storm surge was going to Tampa. Did anybody see a storm surge in Tampa? So please, if you have people who live on the coast, especially people who are new, if, if it's within 200 miles from you and you live in a mobile, please evacuate. So we pray for all of them and the folks who have died as well. If you're a member of Thrivent Financial, they are doing a matching gift program for the hurricane relief. If you go to their website, they may have emailed you. For every $2 you give, they give $1, so they're going to match at 50%. We need some help back there. Joe's running the monitors. It's not a hard job. Can you push a button? Can you push a button? You're hired. <laughs> Consider that. If you can't do it every Sunday, we could use a little help. Right, Joe? Yeah. All right, Bob. <laughs> Bob Cetera's filling in back there as Joe's moved over to the monitor, and uh, Bob is filling in on the soundboard. So thank you, Sue, for coughing him up, and thank you, Bob, for helping us. We're grateful to do that. There's a concert coming up. It didn't make your bulletin, but I want to let you know about it. You've attended those very well. Sunday the 16th at 4 p.m., Jill Heyman Aponte. I have not heard of her, but she has performed on Broadway, and she's with the National Touring Company. Apparently, she's very, very talented. Have any of you heard of her before? All right, well, she's, if you're with those things, you're talented. I, I, I'm not allowed on Broadway. I'm not even allowed in Broadway, so. <laughs> She's coming on 4 o'clock Sunday the 16th. Look at your calendars. We'll get that information in your bulletin uh, this uh, coming week. It is out there on the information board above the table. has uh, everything about her. We are baptizing the young man who's not happy about being here this morning. <laughs> Usually he's really quiet. Oh, I wouldn't be happy if you made me wear that suit either. <laughs> he's like, what's going on? Owen Ryan Lautner will be the first baptism in here. So how about giving the family a big amen? amen? Okay, there's a special insert in your bulletin for that. The family has color. Most of you have black and white. It is this bulletin insert. When you open it, you will see where we are going right at the beginning to this piece of the insert. That is because we can reuse uh, some of these. Uh, this insert is for an infant. We have the exact same insert, in, insert for adult baptism. So that's why we built it that way. How about giving Michelle a big amen for putting all that together? So 
when we get that far, just pull that out and you'll be following along with us. And uh, Zach and Megan are the sponsors as well, so they'll be doing those peace parts. And by the way, the congregation has a peace part. You were called to pray, support, and lift up Owen Ryan. You ready to do that? Yes. Good. That we're going to replace the creed today with that. Real quick, Carolyn, come on up uh, so you can talk just briefly, please, about the pictorial. And Joan Knight, if you want to make your way up as well, please. She said she was going to sit up front, and Joan sat all the way in the back. <laughs> Again, this is Carolyn about the pictorial. Just briefly, everybody say good morning, Carolyn. Good morning. We need 55 more people to sign up or it's not going to happen. We need 145 have signed up. You've got two weeks, and that's it. Um, the dates are the 13th, 14th, and 15th. We're trying to avoid Saturday, if possible, because of the church back there. But if we need to, we'll do it later that day. And um, we need you to sign up, or it's not going to happen. Well, you can sign more positive than that. <laughs> I haven't signed up yet because I was waiting. I will sign up today. Uh, uh, out there, Carolyn or someone will be out there at the table if you have questions. And if you can't make it that those days, let us know. We might see if we can do pictures. Joan Knight. And, and, the, and the groups, we're going to try to do, do groups. If that doesn't work, we're going to have to do individual for and Groups are for ministry teams, by the way. Yes, Ann. Does the couple count for two or one? One. One. So Ann's wondering if a couple counts for two. That's, that's one. one. Picture. So if your spouse doesn't want to do it, you count for one. Good morning. Everybody say good morning, Joan. Um, the nurture team would like to present just a little something to this first baptism at our church. And, it's first uh, baptism in here. In here. That's correct. I'm sorry. That's I misspoke. Okay. <laughs> and so it's just a little something, but we just wanted you to know that we are so happy to have him join our family. Give the nurse team, Joan, a big amen. amen. So you've got a lot of goodies to take home. Now, if you can put that in front of the font, please. In front of the font. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this quilt is made by the sewing circle for Owen as well. Of course, we got this and this special for him after we baptize him, a book. And so, and we got, of course, got his candle. You're all ready to hear um, this little light of mine. You know that's where that comes from, don't you? <laughs> it comes from baptism. What do we say? May your light so shine before others, right? You all look like you're deer in the headlights. <laughs> <laughs> Have any of you been a part of a baptism before? <laughs> all right, we're going to take a quiet minute to pair hearts and minds for worship. <laughs> for our first hymn. It's up here on the monitors. You prefer the hymnal. It's 413, 413.
be seated. As we have lots of folks visiting with us this morning and some returning, as we move into the liturgy portion of worship, it's a lot easier if you take this piece out, which is the liturgy piece, and remove the inserts and leave them sit beside you uh, or in the back. That way, when we get to page three, you'll be following along with us, not turning into the insert mm -hmm. section. Top of page two, we continue worship with the apostolic greeting. The grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We come together in confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, together let us acknowledge our failure at times to love God our Father's people and world as His Son Jesus, our Savior and Lord, does. God, our Father of forgiveness, mercy, and salvation in your Son, Jesus. We confess that at times sin still has a hold on us. At times we harm your good creation, world, and people. At times we fail to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. At times we turn from your will for our lives and go our own way. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, continue to direct us to your path and will that leads us to life in Jesus. Remain our refuge and strength on the journey through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, Lord, and Redeemer. Amen. Beloved of God our Father, our sins are forgiven in His Son, Jesus, and we are made whole in Him. The Holy Spirit directs our way to new life in Jesus, who joins us on the road. Continue to journey now in Jesus' abiding love and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Continue to serve Jesus and his ministries and missions. Amen. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the day, praying it together. Let us pray. Benevolent, merciful God, our Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit, when we lack spirit, fill us. When we lack faith, strengthen us. When we lack servanthood, reform us that with fervor we love and serve you and our neighbors for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we pray the, pray, for, uh, pray the prayer for the world, we of course keep Hurricanes Fiona and Ian and those in the Caribbean and the United States who are victimized for the recovery efforts. And we also keep the war in Ukraine as it keeps taking strange twists and turns, uh, especially since Russia annexed those four provinces. So we pray nuclear weapons are never used any ever again, but there's a threat out there. So we ask for the Lord's intervention, don't we? Let us pray together. Let us pray for all victims of any forms of violence, terror, human trafficking, and all displaced peoples. All victims of ethnic, racial, gender, sexual, political, and religious discrimination and violence. All victims of natural disasters or human-made disasters. All victims of war, warlike activity, conflict, oppression, and strife, including in Afghanistan, Syria, Ukraine, and Yemen. Gracious God, our Father of healing and wholeness, through the power of the Holy Spirit, Bring relief in every way you see fit for those impacted by natural disasters, human-made disasters, conflicts, persecutions, and wars. Empower all peoples to reach out to those impacted through the healing power of Jesus Christ, God our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We admit our human frailties and recognize we live in a fallen creation. Restore us each and every way as you see fit so that your will is done. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our gospel scripture hymn will be up here on the monitors. Second. It also will have the hymn number. Hang on, Bob. Bob, hang on. He has having trouble getting it up on the monitor. I mean, you can play something. Just wait till you see it come up. It is 646, 
the peace of the Lord. No, at six five six. Six five six. Thank you. No. Wait a second. Six four six. It is six four six. It is six four six. There you go. Should Joe? Should we go to the hymnal? Here we go. No. All right, everybody, get your hymnal out. He's having trouble with it. If he gets it up there, he will. It's there. It is. There we go. Thank you, Joe. It's the right hand. It's the right hand. It's the right hand. They had the wrong number. It is 646 in the hymnal. The number was wrong on the board. Thank you. We're ready. in need of extra peace this morning. <laughs> Rise as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Carolyn Corpix is our gospel lector this morning. Everybody say good morning, Carolyn. Good morning, good morning everyone. On his way to Jerusalem, Jesus teaches his followers about the power of faith and the duties of discipleship. Jesus calls his disciples to adopt the attitudes of servants whose actions are responses to their identity rather than works seeking reward. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory <coughs> to you, o Lord. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you think the slave for doing, do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Give Carolyn a big amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grace Heavenly Father, thank you for gathering us here on this Sabbath Sunday. We're also very grateful that Megan and Zach have brought their latest child, Owen Ryan, to be baptized this morning to officially enter the church through the waters of baptism that we're called to continue to remind each and every person 
that that's not a free ticket to heaven. It is a way to acknowledge that we are claimed by God before our conception, in our birth, in our life, in our death, and in the journey to a next life. And Jesus Christ fills us with the power of the Holy Spirit as he renews us with his righteousness, but he sends us through the power of the Holy Spirit. These are not normal waters this morning. They are touched by the Holy Spirit and fire. As we proclaim the word of God through the baptismal liturgy, we're called to live it out. And as we live it out, we draw others into this wonderful kingdom of heaven so that they too know that Jesus Christ loves them enough to die and rise again for them. This is great good news, a great day to be alive, a great day to be a Christian, and a great day to go out and serve a troubled world from natural disasters, human-made disasters. We make this kingdom of earth a better place in our actions, words, and deeds. May we boldly do so. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is uh, the only gospel account that has this odd statement in it as we've moved away from chapters 15 and 16 in the beginning of 17. And I call it odd but faithful. Have you ever been odd but faithful with God? Have you ever been odd but faithful with God? Have you ever demanded anything from God? Then you've been odd but faithful. <laughs> Increase our faith! There sounds like they're shouting at him, doesn't it? Doesn't it? I mean, all 12 of them, it says, they say it collectively. It doesn't say St. Peter say it, said it. It's supposed to be from St. Luke's account. They all said it at the beginning of this chapter. Increase our faith. And if you look it up in Greek, it's an imperative. And what does that mean? They're commanding Jesus to do something. Now, that's odd, but faithful, isn't it? That's odd, but faithful, isn't it? I know in my life I have done that to God. I want my high school girlfriend back, or I don't believe in you. Anybody ever been there? <laughs> oh, apparently there are other people who have been there. <laughs> Increase my faith by giving my girlfriend back. And guess what? It didn't happen. Because God said no. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> For her, not me. <laughs> Increase our faith. When I read that, it's only in St. Luke's Gospel, it always just makes me chuckle. So you have to back up and figure out why they're doing this at this point in this Gospel. The story that precedes this in the four verses that we don't have that we're going to cover this morning lead us into why this is being said. But it's much different theology from St. Luke. St. Matthew and St. Mark have the disciples coming the correct way to Jesus. There is a man with a demon, and they can't cast it out. And they approach Jesus after he casts out the demon and say, Lord, why couldn't we have that power that you told us we have? And then he does what he does today. He teaches this story about increase your faith. If you had the faith of a mustard seed... Did you notice that in the gospel insert? Michelle has that awesome picture. That is a mustard seed next to a pencil. That's how small it is if you look at that picture. If you had the faith of a mustard seed, you could tell a mulberry tree to uproot itself and throw itself into the sea. That's right. <laughs> he was challenging them, not chastising them, but challenging them to deepen their faith through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now that's for us too, isn't it? isn't it? But the theology here of why they're shouting at Jesus is really different. They are perplexed by chapters 15 and 16 and the five parables he has taught. Those five, he's throwing his <laughs> name tag around, smart guy. <laughs> the parables were briefly what Jesus has taught were grace and mercy and boy they love those three out of chapter 15. The lost sheep that is saved and everyone rejoices. The lost coin that is found and everyone rejoices because heaven rejoices. The prodigal son who was lost and the father receives him back. Lost but found. There's your grace and your mercy. So they were all on board with that. And Jesus teaching this to a large, large crowd. The Pharisees, the scribes, his disciples. There's tons of people there. And then he moves into judgment. And here's why they started shouting at him today. There was an unjust steward, if you remember. And that parable in 16, there's only two. And that unjust steward was ripping off his master, got caught. 
So then he goes out and finds other people who are evildoers, and he cuts what they owe. And Jesus teaches, make friends with dishonest wealth so that it receives you into the eternal kingdom. That's not the kingdom we want to end up in, is it? That's not the kingdom we want to end up in, is it? And they're going, what are you teaching, Jesus? Oh, my heavens. Then he goes, it really deepens it, doesn't he? He moves from there and says, ah, there was a rich man, Lazarus, just before today's gospel. And the rich man, man, he stepped over Lazarus every day, did nothing to help him. And he died and Lazarus died. And the rich man was in hell, looking across the chasm, that Greek word, it's only in St. Luke. And he could see heaven and he could see Lazarus. The rich man has no name as God's blotted it out. And what does Abraham say? No one can cross the chasm to you and you cannot cross to us. And what I ended with last Sunday was the good news. Somebody did do that, didn't somebody? Who took on all our sins on that cross. And he says in the creed, he descended into where? Hell. And in three days, he crossed the chasm and came out of the tomb. Amen and hallelujah. They haven't seen that part yet. But they're like perplexed. Increase our faith. So what happened before? Anybody intrigued? Okay, you're paying attention. That's good. Why we don't have these first four verses, I don't know. Now Jesus has moved from teaching large crowds, scribes, Pharisees, outcasts, tax collectors, sinners, average people, to just his disciples. First four verses before today, Jesus taught his disciples things that make people fall into sin abound and will happen. But how terrible for the one who makes them happen. It would be better for him if a large millstone were tied around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. Be on your guard. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in one day, and each time he comes to you saying, I repent, you must forgive him. So they're wrestling now. with They don't want to end up like the rich man. And they've got to forgive their brother seven times. Oh, my heavens, what are we supposed to do? Oh, and uh, my heavens, he said that we're going to sin. But what if we start leading someone into sin? Do we end up like that one man? Increase our faith. <laughs> and they shouted at him. And what does Jesus do? Man, he's angry. If you think he's not angry today, I just theologically disagree. What does he say? Okay, you. Do what you ought to do. Get out and live out the missions and ministries, doesn't he? It's pretty clear in this gospel, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. Go out there. So if I invite you to come in from the fields, what does he say? Then what, are you going to ask me to wait on you? No, you wait on me. Do what you're supposed to do. Do what you know you're supposed to do. Oh, that must not have been a good day for the magical 12, the band of merry men as I call them. If you want to see what happens next, you've got to read on into the gospel. But this isn't a threat by Jesus. He's basically pushing back. Don't shout at me. Don't command me. I know your needs. I will increase your faith if you ask the right way, and I'll help you get the job done. This is exciting. This is great teaching. It's only in this gospel this way. It's fair to say, Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit, increase my faith, and yet, Lord, put it into actions, words, and deeds. You know I'm big on that. Have you noticed that in this congregation? You notice I'm big on that. Yeah. <laughs> and Jesus is looking at us this morning. That's right. <laughs> and he's saying, do you feel helpless by what happened? In Hurricane Fiona or Hurricane Ian? Are you questioning why I didn't intervene and stop that from happening? I command you to do what you should do. Pray for everyone. Give as you are able. And if you have a skill set of construction or caring and you can go down there, there's places to go, help. But one of the most important things is, is to deliver your faith through your voice. 
I've had multiple conversations already this week since the hurricane with a woman at Publix and some other places that went like this. We are so lucky that it didn't hit us. If someone says to <laughs> that to you, theologically jump in feet first, because I pointed at one person because I had my collar on. I said, luck has nothing to do with it. We were blessed, and now we are called to be a blessing for those who have gone through it. Amen and hallelujah. One of the best things that happened to me at Florida State football game was not happening because we lost. <laughs> the opening drive was good. It went downhill from there. <laughs> Up on the jumbotrons, multiple times, they said, Take a moment right now to give thanks for the first responders, the utility workers, places that are there like Salvation Army, they didn't list them, but that's what they meant. For those who are delivering generators, for those who are bringing sustenance, and for those who care. Right in the middle of the football game, right up on the jump, and the whole place went nuts. I thought about that when I was driving up 75 and driving across 10. The highway was filled with wonderful saints, whether they realize it or not, who were driving those power trucks, the tree trimmers who were going down. Everybody was taking generators, whether it was someone in a pickup truck. And I thought, that's God in action, whether those people realize it or not. Increase our faith. Let's live it out. This is exciting. They're going to recover because God's going to help them recover. They're going to grieve. God is going to help them with the grieving. Shout that from the mountaintops. Never should we say, why did this happen to me? God looks at us and says, I'm giving you the power to survive it, no matter what it is, because my son died and rose again. And lift it up. This is an exciting time in disaster and war to be a Christian, to say our God's in charge, working in ways that we can see and sometimes not see. But I'll tell you what, coming home was horrible last night. The worst traffic ever on 75, ever. And I'm talking when Florida plays a football game, which they're having to do today, I've been stuck in their traffic. All those orange and blue tags, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but I caught myself. I was complaining in my truck. And it was like Jesus got in the front seat next to me and pointed at me. Don't you know why 75 South is full of traffic? It's displaced people returning to see what they've got left. And it's utility trucks and semis bringing generators. And it's tree trimming trucks. And it's my rescue teams. How dare you? How dare you complain? Get on 301, idiot. <laughs> But that's how the devil creeps into our lives. As excited as I was about it, I lost it and I got it back. I was very glad to get home. And then what I said is, Lord, protect everyone who's traveling. Because it's unusually, unusually heavy. It was so odd at 7.30, 8 o'clock at night to have that many people on the road going south on a Saturday night. But a lot of help and a lot of family support. Amen and hallelujah. Pray, give as you're able. And if you have some sort of physical skill set, offer it up. The Lord will accept you. Amen and hallelujah. We're going to have the baptism here a little bit later. I want you to focus on the words that we're going to all confess. Not just the parents for wonderful Owen is too young to do that. Not for all them being the sponsors. They have double responsibilities now. But for us, live it out. This piece of the baptismal liturgy has always been so awesomely special to me. I mentioned it to you. It's called the welcome. I'm just going to read it to you. We are all called to this. Let your light so shine before others that they see your good actions, words, and deeds. And do what? And glorify God, your Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in heaven. That's incredible. God doesn't need us to do any of that. God invites us in his son to be part of the light that no darkness will ever 
ever, ever overcome. When I was at seminary, I learned something about human light. This candle's gonna go out, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Even if we let it burn, it eventually is gonna use up all of the fluid. There was a chancel light, we have one, it's in the sacristy, and it was electric. Theology. The professor said, what is that right there? And someone said, it's the eternal flame. And he says, it's made by humans, there's nothing eternal about it. The electricity goes out and the candles go out. I want you to know it is a sanctuary candle or light. The only light that never goes out is your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and never forget it. And I never did. It's not an eternal candle. Who's eternal? Jesus Christ, crucified and risen. And isn't that exciting? Because he's claimed us already. Live it. I got my hair cut Friday. I wanted to look good for the baptism. <laughs> We've been praying for Rex, my barber, for several months now. He's a heavy smoker and he's developed cancer in two different places. The chemotherapy is actually working for him and he's actually still able to work his normal two days a week. He's partially retired. So I started talking to him about it and that piece of his life because he's not sure what the final outcome is. The doctor is telling him probably will never go away, but he should be able to shrink it enough that he can live the rest of his life as he normally would. And then he said this, thank you for praying for me, but I sure am lucky, aren't I? And what did I immediately go into with someone who's under chemotherapy? I said, luck has nothing to do with it, Rex. Right now, you are very blessed. And you know what he said? You're absolutely right. He doesn't attend church. He said, I am blessed. Do you think everybody in there heard that conversation? What happened there? I increased his faith the right way. Never doubt, though, Jesus is teaching something about himself today and how blessed we are. No matter what crucifixion account you read of the four of them, he never shouts at his father and says, Father, increase my faith to get this done. There are accounts where he says, take this burden from me, and how does it finish? But not my will, your will be done. Amen and hallelujah. And then he took the sins of the world into hell and crossed the chasm and came back so that we can hold up a baptismal candle and know it's the truth that we are going to let our light so shine before others in our actions, words, and deeds that we glorify Jesus Christ in heaven. That is exciting. He's excited. Maybe not so much. <laughs> when you leave this building today, live it. And as best as you are able, don't demand things from Jesus Christ ever. He's already given us everything and everything we will ever need. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to have you remain seated if you'd pull out your baptismal liturgy for me. It has this on the cover. I'm going to ask Megan and Zach and Owen to come forward. I'm going to slide this back just a little bit for now. Get you to stand right here. You'll be the centerpiece. Is he sleeping? Yes. All right. <laughs> so if you would turn with me, we're going to begin here. We're going to begin at the top, and then you're going to switch right away to the insert. Again, this is for infant. We also have an adult baptismal insert. Everybody's excited to have you here today. God knew it was special today because Lou and her daughter who were visiting watched me get the lighter and light the candle. And you know what they both said? 
We thought it was already lit. It was like it was already glowing. <laughs> That's not just happenstance, is it? <laughs> That's not just happenstance, is it? No. Somebody get excited about God's action in this place, would you? <laughs> we begin on page two at the top. God, our Father, who is rich in grace, love, and mercy, and his Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, grants us a new birth in Jesus into a new life through the sacrament of holy baptism. Through the power of the Holy Spirit and by holy water and holy word, Jesus delivers us from sin and death and raises us to eternal life in him. We are united with all the baptized in the one true holy body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in Jesus' ministries and missions for the life of God, his Father's people and world. Amen. Amen. As you two are the sponsors, you say together, we present Owen Ryan for holy baptism. Present Owen Ryan for Holy Baptism. All right, we're going to switch to this insert. We're going to switch right now and finish this, and then we'll go back uh, to the two page insert. Do you want to go by Zachary or Zach? Zach's fine. Okay, I thought so. Zach Ryan Lautner and Megan K. Lautner, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace, love, and mercy of Jesus Christ. Do you desire to have Owen Ryan Lautner baptized into the one true body of Christ? If so, you answer together, we do. As you bring Owen Ryan to receive the gift of holy baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with Owen Ryan among God, bless you, our Father's faithful people. Bring Owen Ryan to the holy word of Jesus and his holy communion, uh, com uh, excuse me, banquet. Teach Owen Ryan the Lord's Prayer, the Creeds, and the Ten Commandments. Place in Owen Ryan's hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture him in faith and prayer so that by the Holy Spirit's power, Owen Ryan learns to trust God our Father, proclaim his Son Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord through action, word, and deed, care for others and the entire world God our Father made, and work for Jesus' freedom, justice, and peace. Do you promise to help Owen Ryan grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, answer together, we do. As sponsors, Zach and Megan, do you promise to nurture Owen Ryan in the Christian faith and life as you are empowered by the Holy Spirit and to guide him to live in holy covenant of holy baptism and in communion with Jesus' holy Catholic Church? If so, answer together, we do. We do. Now your responsibility, along with me, kicks in. People of God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, do you promise to support Owen Ryan, of course, Zach and Megan, and the entire family, and the extended family as well? And pray for them, especially for Owen Ryan in his new life in the body of Christ. If so, answer together, we do. Yeah. All right, we're going to move back into here in your worship folder for baptism. <coughs> this is the part, as it's an infant baptism, that Zach and Megan are speaking on behalf of uh, Owen. And they're called to bring him up in the faith and life of the church. I ask you, Zach and Megan Lautner, to profess your faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, reject sin, and confess the faith of Jesus' holy Catholic Church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, answer, we renounce them. We renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, answer together, we renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, answer together, we renounce them. We renounce them. Congregation, you join us here along with myself, Megan, and Ryan. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, the only Son of God our Father? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give honor, thanks, and praise to God our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
It is right to give God our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit honor, thanks, and praise. We give you honor, thanks, and praise, O God, our Father, for in the beginning the Holy Spirit moved your waters, and by your holy word you created your world and people, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered your prophet Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery in Egypt into freedom. And at the Jordan River, your son Jesus, our Savior and Lord, was baptized by St. John the Baptist and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin, evil, and death, and raised us up to new life in Jesus. Amen. Blessed be God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Pour out the Holy Spirit, the power of the living Holy Word, that Owen Ryan, who is washed in the holy waters of holy baptism, is granted new life in Jesus. To you, God, our Father, be given honor, thanks, and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed be God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. If you want to move just up a little bit, try not to wake him up. <laughs> Owen Ryan, I baptize you in the holy name of the Father, in the holy name of the Son, and the holy name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Man, he's good. Blessed be God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. It's pretty, isn't it? It has a shell on it. It's special for today. I want to, but before we, I want to give, give you thanks. Isn't it great to see young family that is involved in the church? My, my friends that are older than you two, but their kids, none of them go to church anymore. And it, it agonizes them. They have to ask them to come for Easter and Christmas. They're starting to say, give it to us as a Christmas gift. That's sad, isn't it? Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, our Father, that through holy water and the Holy Spirit, you can continue with me. Grant your daughters and sons new birth in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life in Jesus. Sustain Owen Rhine with the gift of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Owen Ryan. Child of God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is really asleep. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, forever. Amen. All right. Give you the candle so you can go ahead and light it. Zach. Ryan Lautner and Megan K. Lautner, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace, love, and mercy of Jesus Christ. Do you desire, Owen, to be baptized into the one holy uh, body, one true body of Christ? Obviously, we did this. You say, I do. We do. Sorry, I'm on the wrong page. <laughs> I don't get to do this very often. We don't have to rebaptize you. It's already done. Sorry, it should have been on the back page. Yes. You'll always remember that. The pastor tried to baptize him twice. <laughs> We're at the welcome. See, I ask you how to follow along with the bulletin liturgy, and then I don't do it. That's not good. <laughs> this is as sponsors as your parents, and we say this together, okay? Jesus taught I am the whole... Hang on a second. This is just for them. You, you join me in the welcome. Jesus taught I am the holy light of God, my Father's world and people. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, whoever follows me has my holy light of eternal life. Let your light so shine before others that they see your good actions, words, and deeds, and glorify God your Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in heaven. Amen. Amen. That promise is for you, Owen, on behalf of your parents. Let us welcome the newly baptized. Now you join me. We welcome you, Owen Ryan, into the body of Jesus Christ and into his ministries and missions that we share. Join us in giving honor, thanks, and praise to God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And by the Holy Spirit's power, 
bearing Jesus, redeeming salvation to all of God, his Father's world and people. Amen. Blessed be God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Everybody give them a big hand. And we've got your baptismal certificate and a, another book, a baptized, which you know this well, but it's, it's got uh, a lot of good info from Daniel Orlander. And I'm going to give you the candle. Well, I'll put it over here where Carolyn's sitting. So while I get the table ready for Holy Communion, I'm going to ask that you stay seated for a minute. If you would like to walk around so everybody can see him, there's plenty of cake for his celebration. So if you want to follow along with the candle or you can put it out if it doesn't want to go. He is really asleep. If you'd like to follow along with the communion liturgy, you'll, you'll find it on page three of your worship folder. So for those of us here today, you'll always remember when we crossed 441 from the former church and went to the bingo hall and we spent quite a bit of time there and the Lord brought us to this land and granted us use of it and this wonderful building. It's all been a long journey since 2016 to our first baptism here, hasn't it? And uh, I'm glad somebody's clapping. <laughs> And we never had to say to Jesus, increase our faith. We just said, Jesus, show us the way. And to that I say, amen and hallelujah. Amen. That wasn't a very good amen and hallelujah. Amen. I'll get you to stand up for the Lord's Prayer, but I want you to be able to see Owen. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us, Jesus, your son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, our Lord Jesus took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out the Holy Spirit that by this Holy Communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Rise as you're able as we sing the Lord's Prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. Teach us to pray. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. Thanks be to God. 
For those of you visiting today, if you don't partake in wine, we do have grape juice. Just ask me. We ask you to pick a cup up. There's hand sanitizers and come forward. If you prefer just a blessing, that is fine. We also have gluten-free wafers if you prefer that. Glad to have everybody here. This is the Lord's Table by Our Theology, and all are welcome, no matter what your age or what denomination you're from. I mean this in all seriousness, theologically. Think about what Jesus always taught. Bring the children to me. Kids need to be invited to the table, even if it's for a blessing.
So as I get the Lord's table reset for us here this morning, a couple of things just quick. Please join Zach and Megan and Owen and their family out in the fellowship hall. We have at least three cakes. <laughs> and if any of you... Oh, you can splurge on a baptismal day. Have a small piece, Jack. <laughs> Lord, increase his faith. <laughs> but please do stay a couple minutes and congratulate them. Uh, those of you who are good at taking pictures, maybe you can get a group picture of the family either in here or out there. So um, I know we'll start second service a little late, but that's well worth it, isn't it? Yes. And I'd like you to envision something with me because I doubt we'll get to see pictures. But if any of you find the picture of this, and I know it's happening all up and down the southwest where the devastation is, there are churches that have gathered that have no building, no power, and no electricity. And they're celebrating word and sacrament. Amen. Amen. And hallelujah. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ continue to strengthen us and keep us in his grace and the power of the healing Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Rise as you are able for the blessing. We pray together. It's up there in the monitors or the backside of your worship folder. Let us pray together. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord, singing, Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. We are Jesus strong. Amen. Our sending him. What a friend we have in Jesus. You know, that's not my favorite by only by the word. I never sing friend. I always sing savior. You do what you're comfortable with.
forget all the things that are on the table. We have the estimated giving forms, the devotionals, as well as the newsletter. Uh, Carolyn will be out there at the table if we can get you to sign up for the pictorial. Again, we'd love to have everybody, whether you're a member or not, continue to bring Christ to all people today and every day. Go in peace. Share the good news. We will with thanks to God. Please greet the family. There's lots of cake and goodies out there. Have a great week.